So this is the um, Ideal Home Show, Spring 2015. So the biggest show that I've ever done, um, obviously running from the 20th of March to the 6th of April. So, you know, um, I'm Mel Parry, I'm a Double Diamond leader with It Works Global, and I've done um, a number of different um, events now. Um, and my team does a huge amount of events. Um, so with regard to, um, you know, Nashville alone, the list was just ridiculous. Um, you know, we did the clothes show, we did um, Professional Beauty London, Manchester and Dublin. We did um, Glow both in Kent, so that's a wedding fair. We did a wedding fair called Glow that was both in Kent and Manchester. And we did the Manchester one twice, but maybe even done the London one twice for Glow. Um, Oh goodness, um, what else did we do in, um, so we did the Ideal Home Show in Manchester, we did um, absolutely, you know, there's the literally good shows, um, Beauty UK we did, um, so absolutely lots and lots of experience as a team in doing these sorts of big events, but this is the first time that we've done this one. Um, and it is the biggest in the UK, so it's going to have the most people, it's across the lo longest length of time. Um, and when I thought to myself, shall I do this? Um, you know, I don't live in London, and I, I you know, I just decided, I thought, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to book it, let's just get on there and get in there. And um, I'd previously spoken to a guy at the clothes show, so not this year, the year before. So when I, the, it was the first big event that um, I'd ever done which was in 2013 and the guy next to us said are you doing the ideal home show in spring in London and I said why would I do the ideal home show um, you know I've got a beauty product I, I don't understand what, what do you mean and he said there's a woman area and it's huge and he sold um, like moisturizers and different things like that and he said he made a hundred thousand pounds over the 18 days and the shows went that it was the biggest show for him from a profit perspective because of the people walking through the door and the money that they've got to spend and when they walk into that woman area they're prepared to spend money so in 2014 um, my team was obviously growing I'd hit um, the diamond in the February but we weren't at a scale where I thought let's do it you know I was I, I did the Manchester one in June, which was a lot smaller show and a lot um, less of an investment, lot, you know, not, not as expensive to do. Um, but I've always wanted to do this show because of what that guy said as to with regards to the profit. And I truly believe that it's going to be an incredible show for us all. So it's just lovely that we can do it, all of us, um, together. And it, it feels like it was meant to be. Um, that we, I got to offer this out to everybody. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and I think it will set us and make us, as the UK, hopefully start, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to work together. We obviously had the UK Blitz yesterday, you know, that Sarah ran, that's um, in my team. And um, absolutely, you know, fantastic, because, you know, that was people from all over. Mm. Um, it works in different places. So, um, this, don't worry about this, the reason I've done this slide looking so busy um, for people that obviously um, might not listen to the call or might not go on and save the phone with the help, some people might want to just flick through it. So, a um, couple of things, so the how the stand looks has been signed off. Um, this isn't something that I've come across with any other show. I've never had to have an aesthetics team sign off my stand. Um, I was rather nervous when I got the email to tell me that that was going to happen. But they're absolutely fine with it. Um, the only thing is, is that we can't use the roll banners. So that's a bit of a shame. So I'm um, going to have to look, get a little bit more creative on that one. Um, but I already have before and after photos dropping back. Um, and I have boards with things on that. So what I'll probably do is just what is on the roll-up banners, I'll probably just get boarded up. 
or what I might even be able to do is um, because the show's filling up lovely and we've got lots, you know, I mean, there's papers left. Um, so what I might be able to do is actually pay for a specific thing on the back. But basically we can't amend the stand, so please don't put your own roll cameras because we'll get into a lot of trouble. Um, and we don't want that because we want to continue, you know, we want It Works to be invited back to the Ideal Home Show. Um, Wi-Fi access will be that of the venues, so if you've ever been into a big exhibition as a customer or on a stand before, then that can be hit and miss. Um, there usually is some sort of free Wi-Fi connection that you can get into. Um, but, you know, it's unfortunately we haven't got our own because you have to pay for it. And that again leads me on to the power socket. Um, you know, they're all extra costs. And as you've seen, you know, this one was a ridiculous amount of money. Um, so at this moment in time, we haven't got um, the money to do things like that because what I want to do is keep it at a low cost for everybody. Um, and that's how I work all of my stands is trying to keep it as low cost so that people, when they get on that stand, they can make as much money as possible from um, the wrap sales. Not that obviously it's all about wrap sales. So please, 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 and I'll go on to talk about that later, but please don't focus completely on sales. It's as much about leads. And I'll go into that. So the part of the situation, um, oh, goodness. I'm waiting for an email on this. Um, my understanding was that we would have exhibitor passes, so um, I'm going to give it a good fight um, to make sure that we get them, because at the end of the day, um, what you may need to do, which I don't know how we're going to manage this, is, um, is once you've got out of the car park, sort of get the parking pass back inside. So if a couple of you are car sharing, then that's the mm -hmm. case, but um, we'll just have to um, work that out if we're going. Um, and I'll just keep you updated on that one. Um, I'm in exactly the same position. I've even had to book a time slot to put the stand up, which bearing in mind I don't live in London, I'm a bit like, oh my God, I've got to get there exactly in this time slot, and you've only got like an hour, and then you've got to leave. So that's just to unload the stuff. So it's all, all a little bit um, crazy on the parking stuff. Other thing is, we've been allocated five passes for the show. Um, now, I've actually requested ten, because they sent me an email with a form on it with ten. So, I didn't think we'd get ten, because of the size of our stand, but I've winged it and just um, put ten names down. Now, um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to hand in those passes at the end of the day, so the person coming the next day can pick up a pass. Now, if we get the 10, we're in a pretty cool position, but at the end of the day, there's 54 spaces on this and 10 passes. So, you know, we have got some duplication over days, but not that much. So, um, we're going to have to, again, see how they go. Um, sometimes, when you go to them and hand a pass in, the next day we could be allowed for somebody to have it in their own name. Um, we're just going to have to go and see how this one goes. Um, Either that or you might have, for example, we've got Catherine Farrant has got a pass. You may have to be Catherine Farrant for the day. <laughs> a whole Melanie Parry for the day. Um, so it's not a problem. They don't have photos on them. Um, and obviously, you know, if your pass, you, you don't have to wear it so people see it. Uh, you can just flick it around so nobody will think that you are that person. Um, but literally, as soon as I know, I'll pass that info on to you. Yeah, which leads me on to a point of bearing with me, mm -hmm. because this is the first time that I'm doing um, this show. So I'm, a lot of these things I'm going to be learning with you. I'm not going to have all the answers. Um, and all I can do is promise you that I will look after you as if you were all in my team. And uh, if you talk to them, then they'll tell you that I will do pretty much anything to try and help. So, um, you, know, you know, within reason, try and be reasonable with me. But I will try and help as much as possible. Um, and we could just be learning as we go. And things, you know, it, it's just going to be because we've got so many people going to this event. Um, so I obviously, you know, I want everyone to succeed at this event. And um, one of the key things is obviously the one team, one mission. So, you know, if you're not kind, if you're not on the, working together on the stand, then you're not going to do very well because customers will sense that. 
so you've got to um, you've got to work together so you may well be three people from three completely different teams um, and I would say that sometimes that is just an amazing place to be because you will bounce off each other you will learn different things from each other what one leader tells you another leader might have a different idea um, and you can really get a great spark and learn from each other so try and work it in that way uh, let's, uh, so with regards to the stand, if you please can leave it as you would wish to find it um, for working on it the next day. So all rubbish, please remove it. Um, if anybody advises me in this case, then I just, you know, who knows, you know, this event next year we could be doing the same again. Um, if the stand is looking a mess, then the It Works brand is going to look a mess. Uh, we want it to be a brand that people will respect and we're not going to do, get that with a messy stand. So please, 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 um, I am, it, it, this is going to be a huge thing for me. I'm usually on the stands that um, I book every single day. So um, I'm really trusting you, you guys, and the reality is that you're going to want to look professional and you're going to want to do it. And I know that we can work together on that one. So last but not least is um, wrap prices so stay compliant you know at the end of the day there is the you know I think it's 120% above a lower the customer price um, that works out usually about 18 pounds um, I've never ever sold a wrap for that uh, to a customer so um, we don't want to be doing that um, some people talk about doing them on events for 20 pounds how I look at that is, is you've got to sell two wraps to make the same amount of profit. Um, it all depends on the people on the day, how they want to work it, how you feel that it's working. Um, I can come up with recommendations, you can completely ignore me. You know, just uh, because we are at such a big event, um, people are going to be watching this. So stay compliant and work it out between you. And if you start out, for example, at £25 and you think, oh, do you know what, actually, I wish we were selling a few more wraps and I wonder if, then mix it up and change it and see what you go for. Um, and just remember just to stay compliant. That's the most important thing. So that's um, things that are specific to the show. So um, with regards to general, as you're working a stand, a couple of things that um, I'm going to take you through um, what I would take my team through if they were going to be doing a big event. So with any event that you're doing, I want you to take a moment and reflect on what you want to achieve and why you're there. So it, you know, examples of this are, I want to spread the word and get leads, I want to sell wraps, I want to sign distributors, I want to gain confidence, I want to sign loyals. You know, there may well be people that are using this as a pure training exercise. You know, at the end of the day, £80 for a day's training is actually pretty good. And I've had many of my team that have come along, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that they haven't achieved these other things, but they've come along to gain confidence and to hear and to be put in that position where they're going to be talking about the raps all day. Because I can tell you now that when you talk about the raps all day, you walk away so excited it's like somebody's taking an injection of energy into you because you suddenly realize what an incredible product we've got how we are at the very beginning of this company and that's an amazing place to be and you walk away from these events thinking oh my god how small are we where am i going to be when this company gets even bigger so once you've decided what your focus is and i you know recommend there being a few of these then set yourself a goal, okay? So write down numbers, okay? I want to get 60 leads or I want to sign three distributors. I want to sign, uh, sell 20 wraps. Big goals. And if they don't scare you and if you don't think, mm, I'm going to be able to do that, then they're not big enough. So they've got to make you feel like that. So you've got to shoot for the stars and then you land somewhere in between and you'll have achieved more than you ever dreamed possible by doing that. So set your goals, set them big. Um, something that I tend to say sometimes is, um, is if you're going into the beginning of a month and you think to yourself, right, I want to hit double diamonds this month, uh, and you could be at an executive level, for example. So that's quite a stretch. So what you might go is, do you know what, I want to hit double diamonds, that's my dream, that's me dreaming big. 
anything less than Ruby is unacceptable. So maybe have goals set out like that as well. Oh, sorry. So representing it works. We've already talked about this a little bit. So it's important that you, when you turn up to these events that you look the part. So I'm not talking about you have to be wrapped within an inch of you, you know, within inches of, <laughs> you know, being tiny to a size eight. But you do need to be wearing black, green and blink and you do need to look respectable. So please, please, please think about who you would speak to at one of these events. And um, remember that you're going to need to know the product. Now, you will get into the swing as the day progresses, but you need to know the basics of the wraps. You know, turn up and know your basics. I'm sure the majority of the, you will do anyway because you've been doing the business for a while now. Um, and again, the loyal customer scheme, sign as a distributor, key pieces, how much is it as a loyal customer, how much is it as a distributor, um, and just have those key facts in your head. Uh, that will just help with your confidence. Okay, so this is probably the most important bit. So you're there, the stand's going to look great, it's your job to make this stand the place to be in the whole show. So I can book the show, I can make the stand look nice. Your attitude is what is going to make you succeed. You've got to be excited, you've got to be prepared to stretch yourself out of your comfort zone. You know, at the end of the day, you've not paid £80 for a day out at the Ideal Home Show because you could have got a ticket, ticket for a lot cheaper. You're there to grow your business, you're there to make the most of all those people who you won't get a chance to speak to again. You're going to have 10,000 women walking through the doors. So get there early. Go make friends with all of the people on the other stands. You know, at the end of the day, they're potential customers. They're potential distributors. And, um, you know, you've got that opportunity before anybody's even walked through the door. And just because you're at the back end of the show does not mean that, one, it won't be a different person that you're speaking to that was there at the beginning of the show speaking to somebody else. And the reality is that people buy are people that they gel with. So, you know, it, the reality is that some people will meet three or four it works distributors and sign with one of them because that's the person they get on with. So don't be afraid. Go there. Speak to people. Um, try and be respectful. So, you know, if somebody said, I've already spoke to someone, I'm thinking of signing as a distributor with them, then we're not going to go there. You know, they are going to be left alone because that person has worked hard for them. But, you know, don't be afraid if you're near the end of the show to go and chat to people because at the end of the day, you know, you've all paid your money to be there. So you're going to make that, that stand is going to be the buzziest place to be. You're going to have the energy and you're going to bring the energy um, and the attitude and you're going to go there thinking, I'm going to have an amazing day. And if you go there with that, then I can tell you now that you will do. So... Guests are starting to come through. You're there to tell them about your business. So don't mess about. You know, we're handing out Blitz cards. We have got literally, we're going to have hundreds of Blitz cards. There is going to be God knows how many people. Um, and you're going to be remembering that you're a pioneer. So you're one of the first UK, uh, one of the first It Works distributors in the UK. You're opening a country. It's hard work. People are not going to know what this product does. You're going to get people that look at you like your arms. You know, you've said to them, have you tried that crazy rat thing? What they've heard is, do you want to chop my arm off? They're going to look at you in this way. And you are going to get so many no's. But you have to get the no's to get the yeses. And you have to get those looks to find those people that are going to be interested in this product. And we all know we love this product. We all know the people are out there. You just have to speak to a lot of people to get to them. And you're going to get the, as if that really works. You know, we've all been there. It's no different being at an event. It's just what you will have is you will have, you know, God knows how many people saying the same things in one short space of time. And what happens is, is you would get a few no's. You might feel a little bit deflated. Don't. Just remember that this is how the business works. So take those no's and count them. Because if you get enough no's, you're going to get a yes. So just keep going and count them. When you're handing out your cards, you want to engage with people. 
For me personally, I always say, have you tried that crazy rat thing? So they're walking past. It doesn't matter if they've looked at your stand or not. They're getting a card. They're, as they're taking the card, I say, it's a body wrap that works in four to five minutes and results is two to six months. You can say it really quickly and get it across as they're literally walking past. But be yourself. Find the thing that works for you. Have a little think about this beforehand. Have a little think about how you're going to do it. How do you normally approach people? Some people will say, would you like a money off voucher? If that's your thing, great. Use your thing, but just remember it's going to be on a bigger scale. The key is be yourself and ask a question that needs an answer. So would you like a money off voucher as a yes or a no? Have you tried that crazy rat thing as a yes or a no? You're going to be asking them something they've got to respond to. And then the most important thing ever is getting that information. So you're going to have your contact sheets, which I've added the file onto the um, thing. You're going to have your contact sheets and you're going to go through those, con those, those people and you are going to be asking them if they want to be entered into a free prize draw for a free wrap. Okay. So you might decide between the three of you to do it or whatever. I'm not forced how you work that whether you go home, how you do it, um, but it's a free prize draw. You're offering people the opportunity for free to do, to get into a wrap, so, to get a free wrap. Now, some people might even say that you can pay a pound to get into to a free prize draw, and if they get enough pounds, obviously, then that's the wrap covered, you know, if you definitely want to hand one out. And um, I wouldn't recommend handing out at the end of the day, I would say, because people are going to be like, them, oh, well, I've got to come back. You want that information. So the key thing here is they've taken your card. 99% of those people won't contact you. But that does not mean that they are not interested. It just means, like you have done many times before, you've been really interested on the day, you've heard this person, you've took the card, you've lost it, it's in your handbag, you have a handbag clear out. If you've got their email, you're in their inbox every week, okay? So following up is key. You're going to call them, you're going to text them, you're going to email them. You know, you might start out with a little call, first of all. So I tend to, I will send all of my contact list from an event, an email that says, um, lovely to meet you. I will write down specific things about them. So I will write getting married, for example, in July, or um, thinks their mum might be interested in a loyal customer scheme, you know, anything that is going to be able to make you write an email that is personal to them. So you then write that email, and you get that sent out, day, the following day, after you've done the event. And then what you can do is, is you can call them, and you can say, just wanted to check that you've got my email. And then you've got, mm. you've got that information. You're going to call them, you're going to text them, and you're going to um, email them. And you're going to put that email into something called MailChimp. So this is free. And MailChimp is going to enable you to contact these people looking professional. You cover yourself with the data protection of that thing because they can unsubscribe. And you are going to have lists in MailChimp. Lists for shows, lists for Blitzer, lists for your loyals. And what this is going to do is it's going to make you enable ease of communication, making your time efficient. So what you're going to do is, and I did this recently, so for the Birmingham Rat Party event, I contacted loads of salons, I got their email addresses, I invited them to the event. I've got their emails now. I'm going to be contacting them every week. Every single week they need something sending out to them. So newsletters, if you think about something, have you heard about this new um, uh, exercise craze? Have you got what do you think of this diet? I've seen this. This have you heard about this wrap? This is an offer that's um, done. This is how you can get them at wholesale. My team is going to the ideal home show. You're going to be in touch with them once a week, getting in touch with them. And when you do that, people do come back to you. So I can tell you now, I had a girl sign with my team at the end of February. She's been on my email list on MailChimp since October 2013. 
So well over a year I've been sending that girl information. And the other day she just got in touch with me and she wants to join the team. So follow-ups are absolutely crucial. The figure is something like 2% of people follow up more than five times and 80% of sales are made between the 5th to the 12th follow-up. So if you're not keeping in touch with your people, you're going to have really low sales rates. So that's absolutely crucial. And that is it with regards to that. So, yep, I've got an example of the contact sheet. I think I thought I'd included it in the, um, in the page, but I'll check. Is it okay to wear a wrap on the stand? Oh, 100% do it. Um, oh, that's one thing I didn't talk about is wrapping people on the stand. So we haven't got the room for a, um, we haven't got a room unfortunately for, uh, you know, a wrapping booth, which would be amazing if we did, but unfortunately we don't. So what we've got instead is, um, you know, people do wrap on the stand. I've seen it. I've watched people do it at beauty shows, get wrapped on the stand. For me personally, what I tend to recommend is that um, is that people take the wraps away because they're in an environment where they're going to be dehydrated. So whilst you're going to put the wrap on on the stand, I would be very wary of um, the results that you might get because you're going to be dehydrated and you're probably not going to be, unless you go off the stand for an hour and drink like two pints of water and then prepared to need the toilet quite a lot um, just be aware of that but it does get people's attention so at the close show on the last day of the close show this year um, I got myself wrapped so people could come along you can always advertise a time so some people say if you come to the stand at uh, 11 o'clock this morning or you know maybe three o'clock in the afternoon then we will be doing a wrap demonstration and you can talk about that all day and again it gives you something to talk to people about so um, that's a nice thing to do definitely is to um, do that so it's up to you know up to you but yeah definitely you can wear a wrap on the stand Lindsay wants to start tomorrow right how many wraps would you recommend taking for a day okay so what I would say is um, don't overstretch yourself on these shows. Um, if you've got your, you know, if you're doing it in March, uh, later on in March, then bring your March auto shipment forward. So you've got the wraps ready um, for the 20th. And, you know, if you're doing the two boxes of wraps, you've got eight. Hello. Oh, it's 